everybody, this is Dan Miller from Bluegrass Unlimited Magazine. And last week, uh, well, last several weeks, we've been doing um, lessons about how to improve your chord vocabulary. And last week, we talked about how to get into a little bit of a Western swing style rhythm, um, which you can apply in the bluegrass context in a bunch of different ways. Um, a lot of times fiddle players will want you to back you up this way, if you, especially if it's a contest style fiddling or you're just backing up a fiddler at a jam or something. Sometimes they like this kind of rhythm behind them. So it's nice to learn um, in reference to just expanding your use of chords. And so the, the last time we talked about how Western swing style rhythm is usually built off of a bass line. Play a bass note and then a, a chunk or vamp style uh, strum uh, behind it uh, in between the bass, bass notes of the bass line. And last time we had a bass line that uh, went like that. We built the chords off of that and you can go back to that lesson if you want to learn that. Today I just thought, you know, let's take another kind of bass line and put chords to that. And um, some of these uh, chords will be similar uh, to what we did last time. Some of the notes of the bass line will be the same notes in a different position or uh, the same notes in a different octave, but the line's going to be a little bit different. So whereas last time uh, we started on the G and went to the B, C, C sharp, um, and then did a descending line this way from, uh, from a B note to a B flat to an A to a D, let's, uh, let's do something like this. Let's go straight from here. We'll go to a B again, but let's go to the B up here. kind of a cool little bass line, kind of off uh, outside a little bit, where I'm going to go G, then I'm going to go to the B up here on the E string, and then I'm going to go to the E flat, to the D. And then I'm going to just do a walk up. Uh, so the line is... Up is going to be G, G sharp, A, and then to a D. And then from there, I'll do a similar line, but switch the chords a little bit uh, from what we did last time, where we'll go uh, uh. <coughs> So I'm going G, B, C, C sharp, D. Then I'm going to go up, whereas last time we did a little ending run that went we <coughs> came down into the G on the low string. This time, let's go So on the G string, I'm going to go, uh, I mean on the D string, I'm going to hit this D note here, and I'm going to go E here, and then I'm going to go F, F sharp, on G. So that line will go. And then N, N on our G. Okay? So now that we got our bass lines, we need just need to find some chords that go along with that. So um, start, we're gonna start on I'm gonna start on a G6 again. And again, these are clode chord, chord shapes. So if your fiddle player wants to play this in C, I mean in A, which they usually do just move up to your A6 chord, but we're going to do it out of G. G6, okay, I'm going to start on G6. Then I'm going to go down to this G chord here. We did play this last time. This is just a G major triad with a B, a G, and a D, the three notes of the G major chord. So I'm going to go. Now when I get to this um, E flat, we talked about last time that uh, a rule of thumb is that when you play in a note outside of the key, you play a diminished chord um, against that. Whereas if you're playing notes inside the key, you can play uh, a major chord or a minor chord, major seven, minor seven, that kind of thing. Six chord, those kind of chords fit with 
uh, the notes that are in the key and for the notes that are outside the key like this E flat. Now I could do E flat diminished. I could do uh, half diminished. Or um, I could just do a seven chord as well. Sometimes when you're walking down a bass line, you could just do a seven chord and it'll fit nicely. Um, you can just play with these things and see what you like best. Um, I kind of like in, in this situation, to me the diminish sounds a little bit too far out. So I like going with that seventh chord. So I'm going to go A6, I mean G6, G major. This is going to be an E flat. 7 to a D7. So that's the first part. Now for the second walk up, uh, this is a really standard turnaround in jazz. I'm going to go from a G6 to a G sharp diminish to an A minor 7 to a D7. That's just a really standard turnaround that you'll have in a lot of your jazz tunes. Uh, we talked about a 1, 6, 2, 5, 1 kind of thing. Um, and this is exactly like that, but I'm going 1, 1 sharp diminished to a, 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 five, a 2, 5, 1, back to 1. And for the exact shapes of these chords I'm playing, please look at the chord chart that comes along with this lesson. If you're just watching this on YouTube, go to bluegrassunlimited.com lessons page and there'll be a PDF that you can download along with this that'll show the shapes of these chords so I don't have to go into detail what I'm playing and, and you don't have to try to figure it out from where my fingers are. So uh, in, in, uh, to save time, we'll just provide you with the, with the chord charts. So now that whole first part is going to sound like this. Okay? So now the next part, it's going to be real similar to the first line that I played last week. Remember the first line I played last week, I went from uh, G6 to this, uh, to this B minor 7 flat 5, and then I went to my C chord, C sharp diminish. I'm going to do something similar, but instead of going to this uh, B minor 7 flat 5, I'm going to go from this G6 up to this G chord. The bass note's the same. I got a B bass note here, B bass note here. Same note. And then I'll go to my C, C sharp diminish. So that's the same. Those two chords are the same. I'm just getting there in a slightly different way. Instead of my bass line being, I'm going. Same notes, but move into a different position there. And you can do that. Mix those things around like that. Um, so now we're there. Now I'm going to go to my D7, E7. And then walk, I'm going to end on this G major chord here, which is just my F shape moved up two frets. Okay? So it's going to be, uh, so all together it's going to be like this. Okay? So that's a different A part and a different B part. Uh, than we had last time. Last time uh, we went this walk, uh, which was D, uh, D, A, E, F sharp, G. So this time I'm going to go from uh, this D7, D note on the D7, and then I'm going to go to E7, right? This is my just regular. My regular E chord is like this. I'm, I'm not going to play that note, so I'm going to drop it and move this finger over here and, uh, and play my uh, D note there, which makes it the 7. And then I'm going to walk this F, F sharp to G, and that G 
G-shaped like that. And that ends that other variation. Um, so anyway, uh, this is just a different uh, arrangement built off a different bass line. Like I said last time, if you go to flatpick.com, you can get the book uh, that Tim May and I did on advanced uh, uh, chords and rhythm, and it has a bunch more variety of, of songs, a bunch more Western swing style backup uh, for um, uh, Sally Gooden, and also we did some other fiddle type tunes like I think Soldier's Joy is in there, maybe Beaumont Rag. Uh, you could do Fork of Deer, you could do Red Wing this way, a lot of your standard fiddle tunes, this kind of sock rhythm or Western swing style rhythm. Um, works really well. And like I said before, if you get in a jam and somebody's playing the standard bluegrass chords and the standard bluegrass lick, uh, rhythm lick, the church lick or the boom chick lick or whatever, uh, you know, you might want to go into this more uh, of a vamp style rhythm, uh, especially if a mandolin player is not there or a banjo player is not there providing that backbeat beat chop, or if it's maybe you, another guitar player, fiddle player, mandolin player, and the mandolin player takes their solo and their chop uh, drops out, you might want to go to this, this style with the, with the walking bass like my Western Swing or more of a standard jazz style um, where you're not kind of not so much making that bass line prominent. Anyway, I hope this uh, short series on expanding your chord vocabulary has been helpful. Um, and next time we'll move on to something else, maybe uh, some mandolin. We haven't done mandolin in a while. But uh, anyway, this is Dan Miller for Bluegrass Unlimited magazine. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and we'll see you next time.